Hi there! Did you know that the cost of solar energy has been decreasing due to the economies of scale in production? However, the balance of system components like wiring, inverters, and mounting units tend to increase with the size of PV modules, making up about 55% of the total cost. So we need to increase the efficiency of the solar cell in order to push down the cost of solar energy. How do we do this? Multi-junction solar cells are one answer. Multi-junction solar cells combine multiple light-absorbing materials into a single device, exceeding the theoretical Shockley equation efficiency limit. This means more efficient and cost-effective solar energy. Hello and welcome to Fluxin Science Shorts with me, Dr. Antonio Cabasvidani. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe, like, and hit the notification button. Silicon-based single-junction PV modules make up for 95% of the PV market. The most efficient solar cell currently available has an efficiency of 26.8%, while the theoretical limit, the Shockley equator limit, is about 32%. The efficiency is limited by three types of losses. Optical, where photons with lower energy than the band gap are not absorbed. Thermal, where photons with more energy than the band gap are absorbed and converted into heat. Electronic, where electron hole pairs are lost if not collected at the electrodes. Overall, these losses result in about 68% of the total sunlight not being converted into electricity. The efficiency of commercial silicon solar panels is further limited to around 20% by parasitic losses caused by the large area. Check out our blog post linked in the description box below for more information on, on this topic. There are different technological solutions to improve solar cell efficiency beyond the limit of the single junction cells. Intermediate band solar cells add an energy level intermediate to the material band gap to absorb photons at energies smaller than the band gap without reducing the voltage. Hot carrier solar cells extract high energy charge carriers before the excess energy turns into heat. Multiple exciton generation solar cells create more than one charge carrier from a single high energy photon. We will focus on multi junction solar cells in this video since they are commercially available and can surpass the Shockley Placer efficiency limit. Conventional solar cells have a single PN junction which is a combination of P and N doped light absorbing semiconducting layers. The opposite type of doping creates an internal electric field that promotes the extraction of photogenerated charges. A multi-junction solar cell has two or more junctions and each one absorbs at a different wavelength. The more junctions, the greater the portion of the solar spectrum that is absorbed, resulting in higher theoretical efficiency. Solar cells with infinite multi-junctions have a theoretical efficiency of up to 86.8%. Currently, the most efficient solar cell in the world has an efficiency of 47.6% under concentrating illumination and it is made up of four junctions. The record efficiency under standard global spectrum instead amounts to 39.5% for a triple junction solar cell. Both of these record solar cells have light absorbing materials constituted by three five semiconductors. These advanced solar cells are expensive, up to a thousand times more expensive than silicon solar cells. Their use is mostly limited to special applications such as space applications, where cost is less of an issue and as per than other aspects such as weight. A multi-junction solar cell with only two absorbing materials is a so-called tandem solar cell, and it is the most viable option for commercial use. They can be fabricated with four or two electrodes, also known as four terminal and two terminal tandem configurations. A third contact variation that is less known, but is catching up, is the three terminal tandem. In a four terminal tandem solar cell, the two subcells are fabricated independently and are electrically isolated from each other. The subcells are either mechanically stacked or coupled with a spectral splitter, which is essentially a set of lenses to direct light to the appropriate subcell. However, this configuration has considerable parasitic absorption and reflection from the inactive layers, 
as well as a higher overall materials cost due to multiple substrates, complex assembly and wiring. In two terminal tandem solar cells, the subcells are electrically connected and must be current matched to avoid recombination losses. This configuration is obtained by stacking the subcells mechanically or through a single transparent and conductive layer, also known as tunnel junction or recombination layer, which is essential to form anomic content between the subcells. This configuration requires less wiring and is simpler to install, but the fabrication process is challenging, since the top cell must be deposited without damaging the bottom cell. Additionally, with daily and seasonal variations of the solar spectrum, the current matching requirement is not always satisfied. Three terminal tandems have a middle contact between the two subcells avoiding the needs of the tunnel junction and current matching as in two terminal tandems. However, these types of devices need further investigation and will not be discussed further here. The highest theoretical efficiencies under standard light intensities of AM 1.5G are 46% and 45.7% for a four terminal and two terminal tandem configurations respectively. Two terminal tandems have fewer bandgate combinations to reach the highest efficiency because they require both electrical and optical matching, whereas four terminal tandem need only optical matching, allowing a larger variation in the bandgap of the top cell. The most widely studied tandem solar cells are silicon perovskite, where silicon is the bottom subcell. Silicon has a bandgap of 1.12 electron volts. So to maximize the efficiency, the ideal band gap of the top cells should be between 1.67 and 1.75 electron volts. Perovskites are a great material for the top cell as they can easily be tuned to have a band gap between 1.15 and 3.1 and electron volts. They can be deposited at low temperatures with solution process methods like spin coating, avoiding any damage to the bottom cell during the fabrication of the two terminal solar cell. Additionally, perovskites have a direct band gap and a strong light absorption coefficient. Therefore, thicknesses of around 500 nanometers are sufficient for solar cell devices. In comparison, the silicon absorbing layer in a solar cell has a thickness of up to 300 micrometers because of the indirect band gap and low absorption coefficient. That's almost a thousand times thicker. In addition to a thicker absorber, the implementation of texture interfaces optimizes the light absorption of the silicon subcell. However, determining the optimal roughness for such surfaces is a complex process that can't be achieved through experimental trial and error alone. That's where computer simulations come in handy. From optical simulations, we can appreciate how much current can be recovered from a two-terminal silicon perovskite tandem solar cell by adding texture interfaces. We used an optical simulation model that incorporates a wave optical approach to compute the reflection and transmission of coherent thin film components, a ray optical approach to evaluate the angular scattering properties of the texture interfaces, and a net radiation algorithm that uses this information to quantify the light propagation in the entire layer stack. The simulation can be performed by using setfalls from Fluxim. From the simulated absorptance of the full stack, we can calculate the photocurrent of the devices. Starting from a planar device with no texture interfaces, the addition of anti-reflective coating improves the absorption of both the perovskite and silicon absorbers at wavelengths between 500 and 1000 nanometers. The texturing of both sides of silicon subcell brings a clear improvement in the light absorption at wavelengths larger than 715 nanometers. The current increases by, increases by almost 23% compared to the planar device. It is silicon that especially benefits from light management strategies, whereas perovskite does not require such treatments thanks to the high absorption coefficient. However, spin coating perovskite on a textural surface leads to uneven deposition and a formation of holes. Possible solutions include reducing the texture size and deposit a thicker perovskite layer, or depositing the perovskite conformally to the texture of the silicon subcell. 
These two approaches led to the highest efficiency records for silicon perovskite tandem cell cells during the 2022. The record efficiency of 32.5% was obtained for a planarized tandem soda cell with an anode texture between the two subcells, which improves light management and the deposition quality of the perovskite absorber. For a tandem soda cell with micrometric texture and conformally deposited perovskite, the highest certified efficiency amounts to 31.3%. Getting the most out of soda cells requires not only good light management, but also limiting losses by recombination at the interfaces. non radiative recombination at the interfaces between the perovskite and the charge transporting layers are a typical source of performance loss. Electrical simulations with set faults show that with increasing defect density at the perovskite interfaces, the open circuit voltage is strongly affected, as expected. To compensate for the loss of carriers, the perovskite thickness should be increased by up to 30 nanometers from the optimum thickness value inferred from optical simulations. This was a broad overview of tandem solar cells, but there are many other topics that can be discussed such as the device structure of the indi individual subcells, reducing the parasitic absorption of the photonacry layers, junction between the subcells, and so on. If you would like to know more about these topics, please let us know with a comment down below. Until next time, and thanks for watching.